You have financials that look great. You have semiconductors that look great. You have the Russell, the IWM. That looks great. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. I hope everybody uh, had a good day of trading. A lot of good action today. Uh, market kind of set up the way we were uh, thinking as far as strength in individual groups. So even though you look at the scoreboard today and you say, well, you know, the Dow was uh, up some, the NASDAQ was down some, and it looked you know, pretty, you know, pretty aggressive, at least on the scoreboard. If, if you were an active participant today uh, in the markets, you kind of know that there was some pretty good strength uh, off the open. And if you watched last night's video, uh, the weekend video, you see we, we kind of, we, we, well, I keep on saying we, I, I kind of identified uh, the group that I felt that if there, if there was going to be any continuous uh, strength in the tape. And again, before we go into uh, the macro numbers, we, we knew that that group was going to be the one that potentially can, you know, continue this market rally that we had since we reclaimed the 50 day moving average. So this morning you had a, a pretty ugly open. It looked pretty bad for a while. Um, a lot of names got hit off the open. You saw, uh, Am I forgot what, what firm it was, but you saw Amazon, uh, I believe his estimates got trimmed. So at one point, Amazon was down like 60, 70 points. Uh, everything was down. Anything that was strong on Friday uh, was down today. And the bulls, again, were faced with a very, very uh, strong reality that, hey, you know, maybe last week was just kind of a dead cat bounce. We knew that the Qs had to reclaim this 374 area that we talked about uh, on the weekend update. And the question was, well, was this just a dead cat bounce? Are we going to close once again below the 50 day moving average? And this is going to start the next sequence of sellers coming in and possibly, uh, you know, possibly retesting last Monday's low, the whole Evergrande fiasco, uh, you know, anytime soon in the next uh, several days. And again, to the bulls credit, two things would happen. Number one, uh, I really like the semiconductors name uh, going into this weekend. Uh, we talked about AMD and we talked about uh, Xilinx uh, on the weekend video and we talked about microchip and surprising enough, well, these, this is the first group that woke up. Again, we talked about on the weekend update, this, this group and the biotechs uh, make up predominantly the majority of uh, the members of the QQQ. So you had a lot of strength today uh, in those names, a semiconductor name. And this is despite uh, the semiconductors, the SMHs, was down on the day. Again, put up a nice hammer here, reclaim the five in the 10 day moving average. But you can still see here, put three days in a row of lower highs and lower lows. However, there was a lot of other names that started getting stronger. Tesla, uh, that broke out on Friday, and we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. Uh, Tesla broke out on Friday. It started getting stronger. Even a name like Amazon, who got its uh, earning, excuse me, got their estimates cut today. And again, it was, I forgot who the firm was. And look, this is Amazon. The, the idea that anybody's trimming numbers on Amazon, it's kind of like, almost like, look at me, look at me. Let me be the one that potentially gets it right. Settle down. Amazon, um, to its credit, Amazon bounced literally $50 off the low, okay, 50 bucks off the low, and now it's back to the level that we kind of talked about uh, last uh, couple, uh, yesterday on the video. Now we're back to the top of the range here. So this is a lot of bullish action, folks. And even though we did not reclaim uh, this 374 on the QQQs, to the bull's credit, what they did was they reclaimed back, right, the five day moving average and they reclaimed back the 50. And once again, they could have easily died out, rolled over and kind of started fading into the close. But the bulls did not do that. That's super bullish action. And if you kind of go back into last week, look how many different things Tesla got hit with. It got downgraded by blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. The stock embraced that went higher. Uh, you had Amazon today neglected, 
neglected all the quote-unquote estimate cuts and rallied $50 off the lows. Yet the semiconductors, predominantly the strongest group in the QQQs, could have led us lower again, reclaimed, reclaimed the 5 and 10-day moving average, started moving higher. So although, again, you got to look at it from uh, the point of view of glass half full. Although we didn't reclaim the 10-day the moving average, quote-unquote, the birth of the trade, we reclaimed the 10, excuse me, we reclaimed the 5, and we reclaimed the 50-day moving average. And in the process, the stocks that were strong last week that were setting up in today's session continued to be strong for tomorrow. And the most important part going into tomorrow's session, predominantly everything we were watching on um, the focus list going into Monday. Now we're watching them again into Tuesday because they did demonstrate strength. They are the leaders of the market. And if the whole market could kind of wake up in unison and start reclaiming uh, the 374 level, we're going to finally start shooting up into this 376 channel. And like we talked about in last night's video, any close above the 376 le level, and again, I'm kind of jumping here, but any close over 376, that's when you start getting the quote unquote uh, Barry Sanders effect. And you're going to open up some pretty big holes uh, into all time highs. What was also very, very encouraging today, right, was the IWM, was the small caps. Again, you don't need to trade the small cap market to appreciate what the relevance and the significance of the IWM is. This represents speculation money. That means people are not afraid. People are not scared. They're not giving up their shares, throw the baby out with the bathwater because the index is a red, right? That's 20 years ago. Index red 20 years ago means everything was gapping down. This is a new market with new players, new technologies, new sentiment. As you can see here, every year that goes by, sentiment and market correlation is completely disconnected a lot of times and today was a perfect example how the russell the significance of the smaller cap group the quote unquote speculation money group not only was up but had a pretty pretty nice day here and now it's just literally one day away from kind of going back to the top of the channel here so there's a lot of good things the bulls can um, reflect on today's session um, sellers being absorbed on bottom channels Stocks that had some bad news being absorbed, going back higher. The leaders, the semiconductor group continue to lead. And now we are set up for, again, another bullish uh, episode going into tomorrow's session. Even a name like Facebook, for example, that had that whole fiasco last week of the Apple tracking and all that stuff here. Again, this is it's building on Friday's move. And Friday had a nice little reversal day. So you can see here the strength is definitely uh, on the bull case. Macro-wise, nobody's going to turn around and say, wow, this market looks incredibly good. But again, if you are an active participant and you kind of on the, in, the, in the trenches here, day-to-day uh, -day activity, you could do, you could really, really appreciate uh, how some groups are, are waking up, continue to build on last week's action, and now hopefully everything gets pulled up and slowly but surely, you're going to see a lot more strength going into other groups. For example, look at the financials, right? The Dow, look at the financials. I mean, Goldman Sachs is literally one day away, right? You see the supply zone here? Goldman Sachs is literally one day away from really, really busting out. This is, looks incredibly good. You look at Citibank today, right? Kind of the same thing. First close over supply. Financials look great. You have financials that look great. You have semiconductors that look great. You have the Russell, the IWM. That looks great. Again, it's going to be very, very tough unless, again, unless we get a grenade, okay? Unless we get a grenade overnight from the whole uh, Evergrande thing. and Anything is possible. And they can turn around and say, look, we missed our payment. We missed our, you know, we're, we're possibly going to default. And yeah, we're going to have a Dow down a thousand tomorrow. But the point is, if there is no new materialistic fresh news, you have a lot of groups that we just kind of demonstrated from financials to technology to small caps that are waking up here. And little by little, the longer they stay and continue to build over the 50-day moving average on the queues, you're going to have a lot more value uh, to the upside. And it's going to be really distributed uh, all across the board. So let's talk about uh, today's session. Again, very good aggressive value today. And that was the whole point. So uh, Tesla broke out on Friday. You can see here it broke out on Friday. Any close uh, over uh, the wedge is, is a potential swing. And today it opened up red. We talked about this on the weekend update. Any, uh, any potential buy into, a, into weakness was a gift. 
Uh, and I said, look, you should see some green at some point today. Uh, big monthly close from Friday. And now this 781 area continues to be a big deal. And why was 781 big? Guys, look at the weekly chart on Tesla, right? First of all, it closed at the highest point of this whole formation. But look at the weekly chart on, face, on, on, on Tesla, right? You see this high here? The high here was from January, February, March, from April the, April the 12th. It was 481. It took out 481, and this thing absolutely exploded uh, to 800. We saw ridiculous aggressive buyers come in, short-term expiration. The 800s, the 810s, the 815s, the 820s, the 830s, the 835s. They weren't just coming in with a little bit of money. It wasn't retail flow. It was six and seven figures. Uh, very, very aggressively. And look, is it possible that Tesla has a res day tomorrow? Absolutely, of course. So, you know, after you get a two, three, you know, two day, uh, three day run, of course you could go sideways. But again, the value in this play continues to be buying the dip into any weakness into rising uh, 60 minute support. So, a huge, huge move on uh, Tesla. Sophie, uh, it's, it's right in range, right? Uh, 1785, 18 needs to build. Any close over 18 potential swing. It did not close over 18, but this thing's getting some pretty good uh, option flow. Uh, Amazon, I still like it, didn't confirm today, but what it did do, which was kind of equally as important, it really deflected the earnings estimate cut that it got in the morning and bounced 50 uh, off the lows. Again, here's the semiconductors, right? Xilinx, 159.50, uh, needs to build. Here was uh, Xilinx, right? Took out this whole range here, highest close in this whole formation. Uh, went to like 60 and a half or so. I still like it, especially if there's continuation strength for tomorrow. A uh, and B D, uh, 107, any close, potential swing. A and D looks great. Looks really, really good. Again, uh, the swing, the, the, the sentiment and the theme is the semiconductors. Uh, closed over 107, closed at uh, went as high as 108 and a half. You saw again near term expiration. They, they came in for the 110s, the 115s, and the 120s. If this thing confirms, you have move, you have room to like 112. This thing looks really, really good as well. Um, Snapchat, Snapchat didn't reclaim 82. Uh, in the webinar, there was a reclaim of the 7950s. That had a nice little bounce here. Microchip, again, another semiconductor name. Uh, 166 needs to build. Here was microchip, right? Here's the highest formation. It closed at the highest close in this whole formation. If it confirms this Bollinger Band tomorrow uh, and the semis continue to run, this thing looks really, really good. Uh, Boeing absolutely exploded. Uh, Boeing 224 needs to build. Here was Boeing, right? It took out the 24 and traded right to supply. Uh, at 229, really, really big move on Boeing, right? Here comes, I said 228.60s was the, uh, six, 228.60s, uh, next stop, take on the way up. That was basically the highs uh, for the day, right to supply perfectly. Uh, AVXL, uh, 1940 needs to build, not a big move on AVXL, went up about 50 cents. Uh, it actually still looks pretty good. Um, you know, not great, but it looks pretty good. And traded up to like the 1980s. Uh, it still needs a little bit of work to uh, to get a little better. Uh, Sava for experienced traders only. 67 needs to build. Big move on Sava. I mean, really, really strong move on Sava. It took out to 67 and went right to supply here uh, at 70 and change. Really, really strong move on Sava. So you can see there was a lot of really good value, uh, and this was going on as the Nasdaq was really getting hit in the morning. But you know, these these the group stepped up. The financial stepped up again. Here's another. Uh, here's another perfect example of a semiconductor. Six eighteen rejected three times on daily. Needs to build, right? Needs to build on LRCX, and here is LRCX. Went right to supply here as well. Uh, went from eighteen to uh, twenty two. If this thing starts building above this top of the range, this thing's going to really open up. But it really needs a strong day uh, from the rest of the market. Uh, and again, here's what we're talking about on Tesla. Uh, 81 rejected again, huge, huge area. Weekly buyers come in, and once they took out uh, and started building off that 781, went right to 799, just a monster move here. You can see uh, LRCX 22 next supply, uh, it traded 621.99. What's cool about technical analysis, guys, and I keep on reiterating this, this especially to new traders, you don't need a thousand opinions. Everybody has the same data, everybody has the same charts. As long as you embrace technical analysis, it's going to embrace you right back. So uh, you got a big move on Tesla, a big move on AMD. 
Uh, huge move, right? Absolutely huge move. And to answer this gentleman's question, he was talking about uh, Tesla. Is this the best stock ever? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 100%, 200%. This is definitely by far the best stock ever. Saba went right to 70. Uh, nice pop here, went to 1980. So just really incredible moves, uh, really incredible moves uh, in the morning. And it really, again, if you really weren't paying attention to the indexes, you just wouldn't even know that there was even a weakness in the indexes. This is how strong uh, things were. So, you know, we're set up for tomorrow. Uh, let's see if the bulls, can start pulling up other groups. Let's see if there's a distribution effect it goes spilling into other uh, other uh, groups, other players. And the most important part is the longer we stay on the queues above the 50 day moving average, the higher probability we're gonna reclaim that 374 level on the 10 day. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.